Hey everybody, it's Teach It Tuesday. You know what time it is, time to learn a new pattern. And today we're gonna to be learning how to make this cute little top. Um, it's super cute, super flouncy. Um, it's pretty much slightly cropped, not really cropped, um, but it has these little stretchy sleeves, super cute flouncy you could do long sleeves we're doing short sleeves today but this is the daisy top by trendy little patterns on etsy and um, i used woven fabric this is a wax cotton print um wax print on cotton i forget how it is but this is in honor of black history month um, i made it for my daughter if you want to learn how to make this top stick around and watch me do it we're going to be doing a really cute pattern um Called the Daisy Top. It's from Trendy Little Patterns, and I got it on Etsy. I got it a long time ago, so it may look a little different. I haven't downloaded it um, since then, um, so <laughs> it may look a little different now if you download it. But this is what mine looks like. It comes with the top part here, which I'm doing the three year. I think it goes up to five, zero to three months to five, and then this is the top, and then you cut on one on a fold just for the top. And then you have a sleeve, and there's also an um, option for longer sleeves. We're doing the short sleeve today, and this is the sleeve piece. You'll cut two of these, not on a fold. And you can use woven, so we're going to be using woven fabric. All right, so let me show you what I've already got cut out here. I'm going to be using this really, really pretty um, wax print um, African fabric in honor of Black History Month. I'm making it for my daughter because she is of that heritage, and I want her to have something to wear. All right, so here is the top piece. So this is the fold, and if you open it up, it's this long piece of fabric here. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep that folded. And then you will need 3 8 inch knit elastic, and you will cut a chest measurement and two sleeve measurements if you're doing the short sleeve. Um, there are four sleeve measurements if you're doing the long sleeve, and the uh, shoulder sleeve and the Wrists are two different measurements, so make sure you're paying attention to that. That's in the cut chart in the pattern. Okay, so I've cut my two sleeves and one chest piece to the measurements in the sizing chart. Um, I have found that you will need to adjust per measurements of the person that you're doing this for because I find the measurements to run a little big. So three years fits my daughter in sizes, but the elastic measurements seemed a little big. So I just took about an inch to an inch and a half off of each one of these. This was supposed to be seven and a half inches long and I cut them at six and a half. So really it's gonna make it about six um, and a quarter for the sleeve arm because I'd rather it be a little tighter than too loose and falling off. Okay, and then this is the chest as well. You're gonna overlap it about a half an inch. So I cut mine about 19, I think. I took off an inch and a half. And um, so it's stretchy enough that if it's too tight, it'll still, if it's a little tighter, it's gonna fit better. You guys get the point. Right. So the first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and serge or zigzag stitch the um, straight edges. So that would be here, here, and of course the top and bottom of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real fast and I'll be right back. Okay, so um, before we move on, as you, as you can see what I did, I just serged the edges of the fabric. This will help protect it from fraying. Um, if you don't have a serger, you can zigzag stitch, that's fine. That's what it looks like, just to serge the both edges, straight edges of the fabric. Okay, um, one of these is gonna come in handy. It's just like a hem ruler. It's gonna help to press this down. So you are gonna need an iron, the best results. You can do it without one, but for the best results, and iron's gonna make this look top notch. Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is right sides together, and this print is either side. Um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and right sides together on this non, the folded edge is here on the top. This is the non-folded edge. I'm gonna go ahead and serge this down. Serge these two edges together. I'm gonna do the same thing with the sleeves. Right sides together. I'm gonna serge that raw edge. Same thing over here with this one, I'm gonna serge this raw edge, okay? And then we're gonna come back, and I am gonna go ahead and just top stitch the serge seam down, and I'll show you what that looks like. So now I have got that edge sewn up here. Oop. This edge is sewn up here. This is what it looks like top stitched down on the outside. I do the same thing with the sleeves. 
sewed them the raw edges together and then just top stitched it down. It's both sleeves I did that way. Okay, so now I'm over at my little press area with my iron that's preheated. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started here pressing this down for memory seams. Okay, so here's the top piece. I have it laid out. You need to pick what you want your top and your bottom to be because they're gonna have different presses. Um, the bottom is gonna just be folded up half an inch pressed and then hemmed but the top because it is kind of like a um, paper bag style what you're going to do is go ahead and for the top we fold it down one inch and an eighth of an inch which is three uh, the equivalent to three centimeters which is what I'm going to do and so what I like to do is I just go ahead and put in the middle go ahead and fold it down to that three centimeter mark make sure that it's on top of itself and then go ahead and give it one little press from memory all right and then I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing around the edge around this entire top edge you just want to make sure that that's three centimeters all the way around the top edge yeah you can use spray starch um, this is what I like to use um, I bought like a four pack on Amazon of that spray starch stuff and it's pretty good if you use wovens often um, And then we're just going to do the bottom here, half inch, which is about like that. Hopefully you guys can see it. Okay. Put my arm there just to press it. And then for this, I'm just going to eyeball it because half an inch is, you get pretty good at doing the half an inch one if you've been sewing for a while. So that's it for the top and now we're just going to press the sleeves half an inch on the top and the bottom and um, we are pressing it I didn't mention that but so this is the inside of the fabric you are pressing it wrong sides together so half inch down on the top and the bottom here these are going to be itty bitty sleeves So now we're ready to make our casings. So we'll go to the sewing machine. Okay, so we're at the sewing machine. I'm going to go ahead and just start out with the um, sleeves here. And so we're going to just go ahead and hem one of the sides here down using a half inch seam allowance or three eighths, whichever you want to do. Top stitching it down. I'm going to use three eighths. Like that's going to give me the best finish. Okay. 
and I'm just top stitching around. And so this is what it looks like on the outside of the garment. All right, and so then what we're gonna do, let me grab my snippers. So that's the bottom hem, which you will close off, as you've seen, we, we overlapped each other, the stitches here. But the top part, you're gonna leave a little opening for the elastic to be cased, um, to be threaded through. So I like to leave it on the actual, um, let me go ahead and get all the little tails here. So I like to go ahead and leave my opening on the seams that I remember. So I'm going to start right here, about three quarters of an inch. All right. I'm going to backstitch when I start. And I am using a half inch seam allowance here. Because you're going to be threading in that three eighths. Um, elastic. So on the top part here, on the top part of your sleeve, I'm going to be using a 3 8 no sorry, I'm going to be using half an inch seam allowance. And how you determine that is there are um, notches on your sewing machine. And you just make sure that's lined up. So it should be sewing almost on your um, folded up part here. So we're almost back to where we started. We're not going to close it. We're going to leave an opening in that seam spot here. So as you can see, we left this open so that we can thread the elastic through. I did back stitch on either side of this so that hopefully when we're encasing the elastic, thread the elastic through, it won't budge. But as you can see here, that's what it looks like on the outside. This line's on the white line, so it's a little difficult to tell, but this one's on the blue, and we will close that off once we get the elastic threaded. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the other one. And instead of on the seam, this one's going to be kind of off of the seam here, but that's my opening. And I did backstitch on the other side of this. So that's ready for elastic. And then once the elastic's in and sewn together, you can close that casing right there. So then I'm going to do it with the top part here. And so it's important to pay attention to what the pattern says for this top part here. Again, you're just going to stitch this half inch. Um, I'll go ahead and do that real fast. The bottom. We're going to stitch half inch. Easy peasy. I'm going to use the half inch seam allowance. Um, and then just go ahead and go around. Yeah. All right, back stitched a little bit, and then I'm just going to cut my tails after I throw my snip part at myself. Cut my tails. Those are snips, whatever you want to call these. I just call them tails, my little end pieces. All right, so the bottom is hemmed, and now we just need to pay attention to this top part here. So I'm going to start at the seam. I'm going to leave an inch opening at the seam. So this time I'm going to start correctly on the side here. Okay, and then for this one, like I said, I put my foot down. I'm going to move it here in a second. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to do, um, let's see here, a centimeter from the top edge is going to be completely closed. So a centimeter is three-eighths. So you're going to look at your three-eighths line here. Match it up to your three-eighths line, and you're going to sew a complete circle around the top with a three-eighths. 
So from the top edge to your needle, it needs to be 3 eighths. So if you pay attention to your uh, machine, it should tell you on the side here, they had a line. Make sure your fabric stays on that line. It should be right up against your presser foot here. and I am going to close this top line off. The top most edge is going to be closed. But the next edge is not going to be closed because we need to leave an opening for the last. So go back over where you started and backstitch a little bit and then go ahead and cut that. So our top line is done. We just need to make sure that our bottom line is correct. And so you're gonna do seven eighths. All right, so seven eighths is not a line on my machine, but I measured seven eighths from the top edge, which if, you had, if you're not familiar with the ruler, this is my little hem ruler. There are eight marks that make up one. So of course, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighths is going to be the mark right before the one. So I'm going to put that mark on the top of my thing here. And then I know that that's where I need to sew. So what I did is I went ahead and pulled this over here like this and just looked at where that would be. And it ends up matching up with the edge of my bobbin clear um, lid here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I'm off of the center here. Seam because I want to leave an inch opening in the middle here for that elastic. And then I'm just going to maintain this part up against that clear lid for that 7 8 seam allowance. Your machine may be different than mine. It may have a 7 8 7 8 seam allowance line. But what I like to do is I just find a landmark on my machine, which is that clear bobbin case, and um, use that so I keep my fabric straight. So I'm going to backstitch my start, and then I'm going to keep going around, keeping that lined up. Remember, I'm going to leave a one inch opening here on the seam. So this is where I started. I'm not going to go back to there. I'm going to go about there. Maybe a little bit more than an inch, but it doesn't really matter as long as you leave an opening. And I'd rather have too much of an opening than too little of one. So I'm going to go ahead and cut these so they're not in my way. And then I'm just going to go get a safety pin and my elastic and we're going to thread that through. So, All right, so I've got three safety pins here. You can do one if you only have one, that's fine. I'm just going to use um, three just to get it done quicker. So what you're going to do is hook your safety pin to one side of your elastic here. Pretty good into your elastic about like that. So what you're gonna do is flip this up, but that's what the casing looks like. If you can see here, the casing. So I'm gonna flip it wrong side out because it's gonna be easier to put our elastic through. Then you're just gonna wanna make sure that you stick this in. Hold on to that safety pin and just thread it through, paying attention that you don't pull it through all the way. So I'm going to do that real fast. So when you pull it out, it should be the exact same facing way 
as your other one is. And so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and overlap them like this, about a half an inch, put a pin in here just so I can make sure that I don't lose that. And we're gonna close that up in just a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and thread the sleeve elastic through. Pull them out. Make sure you're paying attention to which one. Because one of them has the hole and one of them does not. So just pay attention to that. Mine was over. Where did I start it? Here. Okay. So I'm going to do this one real fast. The sleeves are going to be a little bit more tedious because they are tiny. So when I pull this out, my fingers are not working. This is also my left hand, so. <laughs> All right, be careful when you remove your pin or your safety pin that these don't pop back through because that would not be good. All right, so you're just gonna want to overlap those. Pull them as much as you can and overlap them about a half an inch. I'm gonna go ahead and pin them so I don't lose that. Same thing with the other one really fast. Enough. Get a pin and overlap, making sure that they're still laying good. Pull as much as you can out because you're going to need that when you go underneath the sewing machine. Try to get them as neatly overlapped as possible. Alright, so we got these two overlapped and this one overlapped, and we're going to go to the sewing machine to close off that elastic and close up the, the casing. All right, so for the closing off of the elastic or putting the elastic together, I'm gonna use a zigzag stitch. And I'm just gonna go ahead and again, try to pull as much of this elastic as I can out to go underneath my sewing machine here. And before I remove the pin, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I got this placed underneath the sewing machine. And my presser foot is down because it will get a little difficult and it will move on you. All right. All right, so once you get it under there, you're literally just gonna um, zigzag stitch over that elastic. And back stitch a few good times, and I'm just gonna do one in the middle, and then I'm gonna snip my edges here. Snip these little edges so they don't get in the work. <laughs> All right. So they don't get in the way. Whew, 28 weeks pregnant is getting a little difficult to bend. Okay, and then I'm just gonna stretch this right here so that that part will go up underneath into the opening. You may have to finesse it a little bit. Even out your gathers. So that, that part, that's the whole part. Now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna pay attention to where I hemmed originally. I'm gonna stretch it out flat and close off that casing. So as you can see right here, to right here is what I'm gonna close off. I'm gonna try to get my needle, I'm gonna hand crank the needle to line up with my original seam here. Back, ooh, Lord, one minute. Forgot to change my stitch. <laughs> Easy peasy. All right, change it back to a straight stitch. All right, and then pull this flat. Use your wheel here, your hand wheel, to make sure that it lines up with that original seam. 
back stitch and then make sure you're pulling it straight and line it up with that other side. Alright, so that sleeve is complete. Now I'm just going to go ahead and cut these little edges off. One sleeve down, one more to go, and then the top. And it will be done. So here's one of those little sleeves. It's super cute and frilly. Um, and we'll add that in a minute. That part's the easiest part, so we're going to do the sleeve real fast. Again, try to pull it as much as you can. We'll take some finesse to get it underneath here, but nothing we can't handle. You may stab yourself a few times, but hey, it's what you signed up for, right? <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go ahead and close that down on there. Okay. And then I'm going to move this over. I'm going to go ahead and start just a little bit before I take the pin out. Go back to your serger stick over here. Zigzag. Remove that pin. Don't go over it. Um, you can go over that. Um, I've done it before. But it will blade or dull your knife. Or This is not a knife. This is a needle. It will dull that needle out quick. Um, and potentially break it if it goes over um, in the wrong place. If you get away with it, you're likely lucky. All right, so then I'm just going to go ahead and pull to get that part to go underneath there. Even out my gathers just so it's easy. Flip this right side out so that I can see and make sure, because that's really the only place I care about that my... So switch it back to straight stitch. Hand crank your needle over that edge. Straighten that part out just to make sure. All right, so that's good. Sleeves done. Now we just got to top stitch or close off the elastic on the top. Then stitch the casing closed and then add the sleeves, and we are done with this cute little daisy top. So that is that one. Two sleeves done. This one's going to be a little bit easier to sew because we have so much slack, hopefully, here. Alright, so you're just getting my, my nail keeps smagging on this fabric here. I need to clip my nails. Alright. So we'll change it back to zigzag. Just stitch over that overlapping elastic. Back stitch a few good times. And then cut your little tails off so they don't get in your way. And then same thing again. You're just going to pull. And it will pull that elastic into the shirt here. I'm already feeling like this might be a little too big for my daughter. But it's okay. She'll grow into it. I may have to make baby brother a matching shirt and her this top to wear for um, when he's born. Which is like April, May, so that's probably better weather for this shirt anyway. So I flip this right side out. I'm going to go to the back here, the back seam. Flatten it out, just basically stretching that elastic out, finding that seam. Switching this back to a straight stitch so we don't mess up. And hand cranking this wheel just to make sure that it lines up with the original seam. Pulling it straight. And then back stitching. And this part is done and now all we have to do is add the sleeves. And so that part is really simple. Okay, so to find the kind of shoulder points here, what I'm going to do is take this back seam here we'll make that a side seam so that one seam that we have on the top I'm gonna make that my side seam here and I'm gonna stretch it open and I know that this is gonna be the shoulder point or the sleeve point and this is gonna be my sleeve point so I'm gonna make sure I hold on to those because those are gonna be my equal sleeve points so I can let go of this the seam because I know that one's marked for me 
All right, so what you're gonna do here is you're gonna grab your sleeve, and I like to go ahead and make the seam here match up to where the point that I wanna hold for the sleeve. And so what I'm gonna do is about, um, it's just about a three eighths of an inch from the top. You don't want it to be exactly on the top, but a three eighths from the top. You're gonna to wanna to pin that down. I'm not gonna go ahead and pin it. I'm just gonna go ahead and hold it here. But as you can see, that is the wrong side. The sleeve and the top are right sides together right now. And I'm gonna sew with a straight stitch right here, making sure everything's out of the way. Right here on that original seam, I'm gonna sew, let's see here back and forth a few times just to make sure that this goes. And I'm gonna do about, probably about a half an inch, just to make sure. So I'm gonna back stitch when I start. Just a few times, just to make sure that's secure. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut my tails. So there should be two in there and two on the outside. Okay, and then this is what the sleeve looks like when it's attached just like that so I only attached about that much of the sleeve so it can move around and then I'm gonna go over here to this side seam which is the only seam we have on this top and I'm gonna do the same thing with the sleeve so I'm gonna take the sleeve seam here I'm gonna match it up to this side seam here a little bit from the top so about a three three-eighths of an inch from the top here do the exact same thing, set it underneath my thing here, making sure nothing's underneath this, and then just starting back stitching a little bit. And just making sure that you get it pretty good. And then you're gonna just snip those tails again. There should be two facing you and two on the outside of the garment. Oh, but this is how it looks. Super cute little top. This is where the body goes. These are where the little arms go here. Super cute, flowy. Super excited how it turned out. But that's how you make the daisy top. For hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. Um, because we put out a new video every Tuesday. And if you're subscribed and you hit the notification bell, you get all that information from jump so make sure that you do that this is the top super cute super excited to put it on her hope you guys like this video see you guys next tuesday bye